Spinosaurus, am I finally going to get this animal right? It keeps changing. It keeps moving the goalposts on me. It's not just about Spinosaurus. In this video, you're going to learn how to make things look awesome through an explosion of water. Okay, I started off doing some rough sketches. And here is a more detailed sketch of what I'm planning to do. I'm doing the swishy shapes first, trying to get the feeling of the movement of what's happening here. I want this Spinosaurus to be exploding out of the water and grabbing one of those prehistoric sawfish. So in the past I've got this wrong and as much as I'd like to blame Jurassic Park for me getting it wrong, I think I'll just have to blame the fact I didn't do all the research. And ideas on this has changed. The Spinosaurus is now considered to be more of an aquatic creature with short back legs or shorter back legs, more sort of like like a you know tall crocodile sort of a, a gait to it, I guess. And it certainly does have a very unique looking face and head. You do got to thank Jurassic Park for making this animal so popular. The Spinosaurus in Jurassic Park was pretty cool. So then you got this funny thing with short legs, which kind of looks like a really odd shape. It doesn't look quite as menacing. But what do you guys think? Do you think the actual Spinosaurus, the way or what we know about it today, still looks cool? Let me know in the comment section below. Or has science just destroyed your childhood again? One of these days I'm just going to draw dinosaurs the way I want to draw them. All wrong and completely inaccurate. But I could have fun doing that. That might be a future video. But still, it's pretty awesome what we know so far. I have to wonder in the future, are they going to find out that it had feathers? Or proto-feathers? It's like a giant angry penguin. And the fun bit's going to be add in, in the explosion of water. So water is really good to make action, to make things look like action. Without actually putting action lines in, you can sort of show the direction of how the action is flowing with water. Now I'm using these Copic markers. A um, bit out of my element here because I normally I use paintbrush and nibs. But I thought I would try these marker pens. Because a lot of people say, why don't you just use those marker pens? And so here I go. Out of my comfort zone and into a new medium. I have to say this uh, small brush like nibs kind of okay. I'm more used to a longer brush, like a liner. This is like a small brush. Still it's cool how you don't have to dip all the time, but you also have to go at a certain speed. If you go too fast it misses bits. I know some people hate nibs because they're so used to using these things. I sort of probably go the other way. I'm so used to using a nib for years. I was just so comfortable with it. And this just feels a bit odd. But I will say I am smashing through this a lot faster with this than I would if I was using my usual paintbrush and nibs. But it's a little bit more bolder. It's not quite got the fine detail that I'm used to. It's just very little subtle differences in using the paintbrush. The differences are, it just feels a little bit more organic and this feels a bit more mechanical. Or am I just prejudiced? I don't know. So I'm prattling and ranting on about the sort of tools I like to use, which is traditional nibs and brushes. What do you guys like to use? What sort of paint brushes do you like? Leave a comment and let me know. So again, this is going to be pretty bold, but I'm going to throw colour on and I'll get some subtlety in the colour because I will be using a paintbrush. But even with this fine marker, I am sort of getting almost nib-like lines. 
So I can see why a lot of artists a bit younger than me like this so much. So now I'm laying down some traditional watercolour. I'm going to try and put a dark background as if it's sort of like maybe sort of like an estuary somewhere where the beach meets the rivers. So the background could be sort of like a hot steamy jungle. And then for the colour I'm still trying to get a few action lines through there to show a bit of movement. So I'm doing the old traditional watercolour where I'm just leaving the white behind. More recently I've probably been smashing in a bit of gouache to do the white highlights. So it's probably getting a bit more traditional watercolour and ink. However, I probably will throw in a bit of gouache here somewhere. So I'm smashing in some nice aqua sort of colours. I'm actually muddying up the aqua a little bit to make it look a bit sort of, well, muddy. Whereas down the bottom here, probably a bit more of a pure aqua, where maybe the sky is hitting it a bit more. I am just having a lot of fun here, you realise. It's very relaxing, very unwinding, just to kick back and just, you know, colour. That's probably why they have colouring books for grown-ups these days. It is very relaxing. I know some people say, hey Bill, you should try meditation. I just think, do you know I do that every day whenever I just spend lots of hours on detail and just sort of enjoy myself? I think I'd be too restless. I think I'd keep thinking about all the artwork I could do. Decided to beef up the colour a bit on the Spinosaurus, try and make him stand out from the background a bit. So I'm using kind of like a complementary colour from the background greens, which is like a warm red would be the complementary colour, the opposite on the colour wheel. But this is probably a bit more of an orange, so it's a bit more subtle. I'm still making him stand out a bit. Leaving some white highlights here and there. Still playing around with this sawfish, trying to make it look right. It looked a little bit like it was disappearing. So I've oomphed it up with a little bit of gouache. I was going to put some gills on the sawfish, but then I remembered that they have their gills underneath like a stingray. And on top they just have these little holes near their eyes. Splash in a little bit of blood, make it gory. I think that's just about done it. Spinosaurus. Okay, I'm going to check it up on Redbubble. If uh, this has helped you, just say yes in the comments or say thumbs up or something. Or like the video. If it helped you, like the video. See you in the next video. Oh, and this is the next video right here.